Hey friends, Daniel here with the Lead Pages Tech Team bringing you today's tech tip. Add call to action buttons to your page and link them to a pop-up, a landing page, an external URL, or a section on your page. During this tech tip, let's go ahead and dive into our button widget. Now the first thing that we'll want to make sure to do is add the button widget onto our page if one doesn't already exist where we want it. Now for my particular page, I do have a button widget here already where I want it to be, but let's talk about how to add that button widget onto our page. From the widgets menu on the left hand side of our screen, when we click to expand that, we're going to find our button widget and we'll go ahead and click and hold and start dragging it onto our page. Now as we do so, we're going to see some drop here boxes appear that's going to let us know where we can drop this widget. We do want to make sure our mouse is over one of the drop here boxes before we let go. Now being that I'm going to use this button that's down here, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this button that I just added. But let's talk about the quick action items that appear when we hover over a button widget. Our first option here is the pencil icon, which is going to allow us to edit our button. Our second option here is going to be duplicate, so we can make a duplicate of this button. Third option here is going to be the move option, so we can move that button where we want it to be on the page. And then our last option right here is going to be that trash can icon, which is going to allow us to delete it if we no longer want it. Now you'll also notice that we have the edit pop-up, which just lets me know that there is a pop-up connected to my button, so I can easily access that pop-up to edit it. And then I do have an easy access to edit my click events, so to change what action happens when that button is clicked on. Now to edit the text of our button widget, all we need to do is go ahead and click on the button. From this point, we can go ahead and edit the text accordingly. So say for example, we wanna say get the guide or maybe we wanna say get your guide. And we can adjust as such. Now, as we click on the button widget, we notice that this menu appeared, which we can certainly move around our screen to make sure it's not blocking our button widget. We'll also see this same menu appear when we click on that pencil icon. Now let's talk about the options that we have available. And let's just start with this first one here, which is edit click event. So this is what happens when a visitor clicks on that button. Right now, my click event is a pop-up opens, the pop-up called My Lead Box One. Let's go ahead and click on this and let's look at our options. So we do have the option for no link, just means that nothing happens when that button is clicked on. And we'll see that that button becomes inactive in the builder. Open a pop-up, of course, which is what was selected before. For this, this is gonna show us our on-page pop-up. So these are pop-ups created within this page and edited within this page. They're only gonna be found in this page. And we can, of course, go ahead and select our pop-up. Now we do have the option to count this button click as a page conversion, as we see here. If you are using a pop-up and you have, if I say edit pop-up here, you have a form on the pop-up, I would recommend that you don't use that option. And the reason being is because it will count uh, duplicate entries for a single visitor. So once when they click on the button, and then again, when they actually fill out that form, one person would be counted multiple times. Now our other options that we have here, we can open a Calendly pop-up, so we can input our Calendly URL here. This would be a good example of when to use that count this button click as a page conversion. Uh, jump to a page section, so we can jump to another section on our page by just selecting the section name here, just like such. We can link to another landing page that's been created and published under the landing pages section of our account. So we would just click in the select field here and go ahead and select the page name. We can have that open in a new window as well so that they keep this page open if we'd like. And then our last option here is link to an external URL. So you can link them elsewhere by inputting that URL here. Make sure to use the same format. So for example, HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash leadpages.com, right? And then you can have that open in a new window and count that as a conversion as well. And that would be a great example also of when to count the button click as a page conversion. Now let's go ahead and go back here. And we're going to move down to our options that show next. And these are going to be the global button style settings. And these settings will help to create a consistent branding across buttons on your page in just a few clicks to help speed up your page design processes. Global button styles can be applied to the button, form, and checkout widgets. New widgets of these types will have the primary button style by default when added to your pages. 
So we have these two options here, primary and secondary buttons. We can, of course, choose which button we want, right? So our, our primary and secondary have different settings. We can choose if we want them to be small, medium, or large, and then full width. And of course, if they're not full width, how they are aligned, right? So we can move them around. Let me move that, that uh, modal here and move them around just a little bit. Now we can also edit our styles here. And this will bring us to the styles section in the builder on the left hand side of the screen and buttons and this is where we're going to be able to customize those primary and secondary buttons just a little bit further right so we can choose our button style so say for example line or gradient i'm going to go back to flat we can choose our corner style so maybe we want it to be rounded and we can adjust the roundness or we can do pill i'm going to go back to square change our button color our primary button color our font for our text our text size spacing in between lines of text our button text, so that's gonna be that text where we see the word primary right here, and then our text style. And of course we have access to, right underneath, adjust our secondary button styling as well. Now one thing I wanna note here as we move forward, so let me go ahead and close out of this. Uh, let's go ahead and save that. All right, is that as we go back in here, so we'll go ahead and just click onto our button again we have this option to customize button. Now this is gonna be for this particular button only, and this is going to override any of those global settings, right? So we can adjust and say line, for example, uh, or let's do gradient here for our example's sake, and maybe we wanna make it round. And we're just gonna leave it at, as such, but of course you do have other options here for the border radius, the button color, right? So the color of the button here, or your font, your text size and line spacing, your button text, and then your styling of your text. Now, being that I've set this already, if I go to the styles menu here, and for my primary button, because that's what I selected this was, if I go ahead and change that to line, and let's say I change the button color to this uh, pinkish color, we'll notice after I save, and close out here, that that didn't affect this button because we had already adjusted those, the customization of this particular button. Uh, so it's not going to show our custom, but we can of course come back and change it to our primary at any point in time or even our secondary, right? So we can match that, that global styling. Thanks for taking the time to hang out with me for this tech tip. And don't forget, if you have any questions, our knowledge base and support team are just a click away.